Erica Hart. I'm a casting professional, originally from DC, working in New York City. Uh, I cast movies, television, commercials, music videos, um, anything with talent I'm down for. And uh, I've been doing it for quite some time. Started off in college and have been doing it professionally for about eight years. And uh, I'm excited to be here. I would define bold as simple as it can be. Be yourself. I think that's the boldest choice that you can make. A choice when someone says make big bold choices or make you know specific choices. A choice is your opinion on the work. Yeah. So so each line, each phrase, each scene shouldn't go by without your opinion or your point of view. And I usually call it the Wizard of Oz rule. You know, you had it within you the whole time, and everyone's like, what are they looking for? What do they want? You know, all of this stuff. It's you. You know, casting is usually the first stop on this long train that's called the entertainment industry, whether it be for theater or for television or for film or commercials, it's the first stop. And this is when the creators are looking for you to show them what they want. Yeah, you know, sometimes they'll write the breakdown and they'll write, you know, the character and the person that comes in and they have it exactly what they wrote. And they're like, yes. That's exactly what I wrote. But then you have someone who comes in right after them and they're like, oh wow, I didn't know I wanted that, but I do want that. Um, so it's very important that you put all of what you are, your personality, your quirks, everything into your work. I should know who you are after your audition than before. It's very important that I know exactly who you are from that audition. Know if they're mutually exclusive I think you know I wouldn't necessarily say like okay I'm gonna be bold so I'm gonna do this crazy wacky thing you know I wouldn't necessarily say that might be the right way to go but I think as long as you're true to yourself and you're reading and you're like you know what I think I would do it th I personally would do it that way I think then you can't be wrong there are no wrong things you know this whole business is so subjective you know it's it's like you have one director you have another director you have producers you have writers this is all so subjective and so at the end of the day you have to do what's right for you and you dictate that room you dictate how that audition is going to go um, so it's very important that you know if you just be yourself that's all that matters i think you know just going in there and saying "Ooh, i'm going to do it you know the complete opposite way that's going to get them i don't think so you know because that's not necessarily true to you unless it is but i wouldn't say i'm going to do this wacky crazy thing and that's going to get me the job I don't know unless, again, it's true to you. I think something that I usually say would be to like ask your friends or your significant others what makes you you. Not necessarily your family, you know, you're born into them, they have to love you unconditionally. Um, but your friends and your significant others who started off as strangers who have now grown this relationship with you. You know, what makes them love you? Is it your charm? Is it your smarts? Is it your wits? Is it uh, your cattiness? You know, your, your whatever it is, whatever that it is, as my mom and my aunt say, whatever that it is, we need to see that. You know, because if a stranger who then turned into your friend or your boyfriend or girlfriend is going to love you for it, a uh, casting director is going to love you for it, and then a producer is going to love you for it, and then a showrunner is going to love you for it, and a studio exec, and then the audience, you know what I mean? Uh, so so I don't know if that's the right answer, but I think it's, it's first figuring out who you are, which is like, you know, we can talk about that all day. Uh, that has nothing to do with, you know, acting and all that stuff, but figuring out who you are and letting that shine. I think a piece of advice that I heard from another casting director was to set a time limit. You know, if you're working on your self tape for three hours, you're not going to get three hours on set to do that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when, when we were, you know, before COVID times back in the day, uh, you would have, you know, a 10 minute appointment, a 15 minute appointment, uh, and that would, you would come in and you would have that specific time. I'm not saying to necessarily give yourself 10 minutes to do the tape, um, but I would say, you know, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do the self tape from start to finish in 30 minutes and then give yourself that time. Because again, when you get to that real set or you get to that real, you know, stage or something, you're not going to have all that time and you're not going to get into your head so much because you just don't have that time. Um, so I, I would say my piece of advice would to set that timer uh, so that you don't, you know, 
think of those small things. But on the flip side, you know, it is a self tape, so you do have time, more time than you would, you know, going into a room. But I don't want somebody spending three hours on a self tape. Maybe, you know, my piece of advice would be to send it to someone. Like if you do, you know, a couple of takes and send it to someone who's maybe not even in the business, you know, maybe someone who you're close to that's not an actor or not a director or casting director to see what they get from it. Because that's at the end of the day who is going to be watching this. Most of the time, you know, the people aren't in the industry. But, you know, I think a lot of it just comes from insecurities and trying to be perfect, but realizing that we know that nobody's perfect, regardless if, if you are a religious person or more on the science side or, or both, uh, everything shows us that we're not perfect. And so no one's asking for, for per perfection. So if you're trying to lead into, oh, it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect, it's not gonna happen, you know what I mean? But as long as you do the work and everything and your objectives are clear, your choices are clear, um, I would say sending it to someone else just to you know, have eyes on it and so you can be at ease uh, would, be, would be my advice. I think something to think about as for like an adjustment is something that I would say even if we weren't in COVID times, we have to fall in love with you in the first 15 seconds. And I think that's even more important for self tapes more than ever. Um, but I know a lot of actors are like, ooh, I'm gonna save this thing for the end. And it's like, why? You know, like, like why give all the goods at the top, honey? Um, so yeah, I would just say, I we need to fall in love with you in the first 15 seconds. And I think that's like a human instinct thing. I think that's not, that's that goes beyond the artist tree of it all. But like, you know, you could be at a dinner party, you know, pre-COVID or, you know, something out with friends and a stranger and something that you're just like, oh, I love that person. You're like, why do you love that person? It's like, oh, I don't know. Or, you know, me and that person's not going to vibe. And it's like, why not? And it's like, I don't know. Something about it in the first 15 seconds. And sometimes it's easy. Yeah, some, sometimes it's verbal and sometimes it's nonverbal. Um, but, but finding ways to hook us in in the first 15 seconds, uh, I think, I think is key. dear. They're demons. I come in here this morning ready to write today, Tom, and there was Pipsy, or whatever her name is, with her ass on the keys. And I said, I said, easy there, Pips. Mama needs her antique typewriter this morning. <laughs> and she gets this look in her eyes, more in her mouth, really, like, like the Cheshire cat, only more malicious and more sinister and she starts pressing the keys with her little paw tick 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 and in particular the t because she knows <laughs> she knows that the t is the most necessary letter in the english alphabet and if she messes with my t i am screwed ruined no pipsy no let mommy have the typewriter please pipsy no and before I could even think what I was doing, Pipsy was out the window. So I threw Ginger out the window too, for good measure. What's up, Brittany? How are you? Good. How are you doing, Erica? Good. Nice to see you. Thank you for submitting that great self-tape. That was yeah. great. Um, I really have no notes, you know, I think just technically, you know, you, it was a, it was a clean background. That color looks great on you. Your eyes popped. I think your eye line, uh, was, was great. The only thing that I would say is I felt like it could possibly start even hotter. Like, I think like you could go in a little bit more aggressive at the top, um, and then just build from there. Um, but I think, you know, as a self tape, it goes, I saw all the colors. It was funny. It was enjoyable to watch. Um, and again, like just technically, you know, you were framed perfectly, I think. Um, and, and I think just, I think that that piece worked well for you, for you. Um, it definitely showed your personality and your sense of humor. You know, we all have different sense of humors and, and it got yours, but yeah, the only thing I would say is just at the top, I think you can go a little hotter just to build it a little bit more, but I thought, I thought it was a great self-tape. Great. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, Brittany.
with sending in lots of self tapes now and how things have to be just framed just right. I'm happy that you said that it looked great and it was uh, framed nicely, but I'm just wondering, this is super technical here. Uh, sometimes when I upload my video because it's on a phone, right? I might crop out my closet and this book and that book. <laughs> don't need to see. So is it, is it okay for the video maybe just to be a little bit smaller than super widescreen? I mean, it's just so technical of a question. No, that's a, that's a great question. And, and that's a very specific question. I think, yes, if you, if you want to do, you know, four by three, 16 by nine, whatever, you know, you want it, that's totally fine. You know, I think because it was a comedy, being a little wider was great because you had so much physicality. If that was a drama, I would say push in just a little bit so that we could see, you know, a little bit more, you know, of your facial expressions and things like that. But because it was a comedy and, and it was so physical, I think that was fine. But yeah, you can crop it in more. Most of the time we're gonna be looking at, at a tablet or on, you know, your laptop or on the phone. Like I'm looking at self tapes on my phone at like two in the morning, you know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, no one's watching it on a big IMAX screen. Um, so yeah, your, your ratio, your ratio is fine. You know, I would say, you know, for for size wise, you know, 1080p, I don't think you need, you know, I don't think you need all of that resolution. 720 or maybe even like a 980 resolution, I think is totally fine. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for it. Mm. How's it hanging? What? <laughs> it was a pun. I know. I'm lame. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I brought you a glass of water. It's from the faucet. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Not at all. This is the last one, so I should be done in just a moment. Shit. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> there it is. I didn't think of you for Pinot Grigio. Yeah. I don't usually drink until after dinner, but now is as good a time as any to celebrate. My wife and I argue all the time over wine. We have to buy two because she likes hers to taste like Kool-Aid. I like mine bitter. I didn't see your wife. I should have invited her over too. She's dead. Well, Pinot Grigio. Screw? Right. Um, yeah, I will take that, and you can have this little guy. Ellie? Thank you for submitting that self tape. Oh, thank really, you so much for doing this. No, no, thank you. Um, really solid job. Again, technically, I thought it was great. Um, I thought that background was great. Um, the color was wonderful for you. Your eyes popped. You know that light on your eyes. It, it showed those baby blues, which was gorgeous. Um, I would say just technically, I think I wanted a little bit of more of a zoom in moment, just because you were giving a lot with 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 your face, and I think I wanted just to see that a little bit captured a little bit more uh, just with that zoom in and enough this and all of this is subjective everything I say is subjective something for me I personally like someone to be a little off of center so your reader was um, I guess to your left or or to your right um, if you moved to your right Yes, if you move to your right, just to show that there's someone else that you're talking to ah, on the other side, okay. you know, and vice versa. That's just something for me. Um, some people could disagree with me, but that that's just something for me that I, because rarely you see someone in the middle on, on screen. You see you rarely see someone center, um, just a little bit left or a little bit right. Um, but th that technically, that's what I would say. As for the read itself, I loved props. And again, that's something also subjective. Some casting directors don't want to use props. 
others do. I'm a huge fan of props, so I loved that you brought the cups into it. Um, something to think about with the reed, though, I think you could just squeeze some of the air out of those transitions and just pick up the pace just a hair. I did like that you took your time in those places to digest of what he was saying, um, but I do think there were times that you could just get there just a little bit quicker. Um, but but yeah, technically, I, I think that self-tape was, was really sound um, and, and you looked really great. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kelly. you very much. Can you go too far in being bold? I mean, there's always, you know, a line, there's always a spectrum, you know, and I think, you know, I would rather reel someone in than build someone up. I would rather you go 3000% and make me bring you back to 100 than you give me 20, you know, because I think being in a rooms with a lot of these producers and these directors, you know, if you give them one thing, it's going to be like, oh, well, that's all they can do. You know, whereas if you color it up, especially for the dramas, that's what it is. It's all about those colors. Um, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, they can do this. Oh, they can do that. Oh, they can do this. Oh, they can do that. And that's what makes all these people excited, especially for television, since it's an evolving medium. Um, so, you know, that's why I say, you know, throw it all to the wall, you know. And at the end of the day, if you make those big, bold choices, if they don't pick you, then OK. But if you play safe, then you might get lost in the shuffle. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. playing it big and bold and, and all that stuff will book you the job. You might lose some jobs, but playing it safe, you're probably not gonna not gonna get those jobs. So, you know, all you can do is is what's best for you. Um, but yeah, throw it to the wall and let somebody else, you know, reel you back in. I hate liars, don't you? They are the worst. Last night something entered our world. How do you know? It drank from the pool. Drina and I both felt it. Ah, yeah. The pool. The pool of magic. Something entered our world. We could feel the drain. I can feel it. Can't you? Can't you tell something powerful entered our world? Desi, you and Drina need to find out what or who it is, understood? I did feel something last night. Something powerful. Of course. Your words give form to our actions, Tony. Hey, Daria, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, that was so fun. What was that from? <laughs> so, um, shout out to I7, um, I7 One Films is the production company. It's a television show that they're in development for called St. Gabriel. And it's like a hybrid TV show. So it's part detective series, but there's an underground crime syndicate that's kind of run by supernatural beings. So demons mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so there's definitely a feel to these characters in this world, um, but it sounded like a lot of fun and an opportunity to use my imagination. So yes. committed. <laughs> no, I thought I thought I thought it was great, and it felt like it. I when you said like detective, it felt like a noir, like the way and how, like even how you used your body and like things like that was was definitely wonderful to see. Again, y'all are killing it with the technical technical aspects. You know, like background was great, eyes line was great. I loved how you like stepped closer to to, to um, show intimacy, you know, I think that worked. There are like sometimes where people step in a little bit too much and it's like, oh, okay. And they try to use the medium, but I think that choice was really, really well done. Just something to think about when um, like you're looking down or you're looking another way, I would say try to always be equidistant to where your reader is. So usually like, you know, one side of uh, the, the laptop to the other side. So when the first take you started, like I, uh, you were maybe a little bit too much profile. And just remember that you wanna, you know, always have as much face uh, as you can, yes, face. Uh, you wanna have as much face in the camera as much as you can, of course, without looking, at, striking that camera. Um, so I would just play a little bit so that, you know, we can see both eyes as much as possible um but yeah no i thought you got the 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 tone of it you know it was fun to watch um another thing to think about uh your 
reader, I think, was really, really close to your camera's microphone. So your reader came in a little bit hotter than your volume. So I would just maybe make the your camera or your phone or whatever just closer to you and whatever your reader is on your phone or on your tablet, just a little farther back so that we can hear you clearer and your reader, you know, isn't as loud as, as you are, but we can still hear your reader. Um, but no, I thought that was a very dynamic self-tape and, and really fun to watch. Thank you so much. That's great comments. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> with self-taping and with slating, like this is my question about slating, because I know that that's very personal to every casting office as well. Um, do you find that there is, uh, unless it's like specifically written in the breakdown of what to include, what do you think is absolutely must be included? And also, is it always necessary to do that full body pan? Do we need to do that? Do we not do that? What are we doing these days? I don't know. What are we doing these days? That's a really great question for everything. Um, I would say I'm not a fan of the full body pan. I'm a fan of, of course, a full body shot or a cowboy, which is three quarter, you know. Um, but but I, I think the pan reminds me of like a 70s weird film thing. Um, so I would say a, a, like a, a lot of casting directors and coaches are saying this, and I, I definitely agree. If you're like Erica, like I can only take a photo because my apartment is so small, like et cetera, et cetera and you're editing it, split your screen, you know? Have you saying, hi, I'm Erica, I'm 5'4", based in New York, and then split it so that you have that photo of your full body shot, you know? Because it's like, well, if I go too wide, then you see the cat, you see the bed, you see the thing, and you don't want... I, nobody, and honestly, nobody cares, you know? Like, we understand we're all at home, we're all trying to survive, we're all trying to breathe. Um, <laughs> but if you need, if you feel a little certain way, just have that split screen. Have your photo of your full body shot and then have you saying your slate. Um, for me, I would say your name, uh, your height, and where you're located currently. <laughs> you know, because of COVID times, um, a lot of places are saying, you know, they can only uh, hire someone who was like in New York City at this time because of quarantines and things like that. So we want to know where you are currently. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I would say. Your name, um, where you're located and your height. I think that, you know, is baseline for, for most people. Some people like the slates at the top. I personally like the slate at the, at the bottom um, and I like it to be separate separate, uh, uh, like a, if you if you if you edit all of your takes together, uh, that's great. I personally like having like a separate slate just in case we decide not to send it. Um, so again, it's office by office, but that's my preference. Amazing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a catch 22. I think, you know, if you're trying to make a relationship with a casting director, I think the first thing is, you know, to reach out to them, um, you know, email. I think now I this is, you know, what I say, it's now your time to shoot your shot. You know, I think we're all at home and we're all looking at things, especially if I'm looking for something very specific. I want to know who you are and I want to know, you know, what you can do and all that stuff. But with that being said, I would say if you're reaching out to someone, because I always get this question, how should we reach out? How should we reach out? I usually bring the question back to you and I say, well, how would you like to be reached out? If there was like a budding actor or a budding artist who, was, who saw your work and you know wants to be mentored or has a question, how would you want to be reached out? For me, I like you know short, sweet, to the point, focused, succinct, all that good stuff. Specificity is key. I get a lot of emails and a lot of DMs from people saying like, I'm an actor. Cool. You know what I mean? Like, that's great. No tea, no shade. But why are you contacting me? Did you see something that I'm casting and you think you're great for? Uh, did you see uh, something that I've already cast and like you might know my work and you know, you say like you see the stuff that I do and you might be interested in something else. If you say, hey, Erica, I saw you on the panel at Backstage. I see that you're casting this show. I think I would be great because here's uh, my headshot resume and reel. I look forward to hearing t from you soon. I think that just you know gives your objective, what you want, your materials, how to contact you, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. Especially, I can't stress this enough. Especially if we're casting something very specific, uh, you know, if we're if I'm looking for someone who uh, has a black belt in jujitsu and speaks fluently, uh, you know, speaks fluent Italian and you know can knit, and like boom, that's you. Let me know. 
You know what I mean? Let me know and, and say, even if I know you, even if I'm your best friend, I might not know that you have a black belt in jujitsu and say like, hey, Erica, just I saw that you're casting this, letting you know that I got a black belt, you know, two years ago and I think I'd be great for it. Boom, bam, thank you so much. You know, you you are, this is your career and you have to take it. Um, and, and now is the time to, to shoot your shot. I would say how one would reconcile appropriate choices to bold choices and figuring out that that ratio. I think again, if it feels good to you, if it feels natural to you, then that's what's for you. You know, I think there, I can't remember the movie, but there was this big movie where um, act, it was like a, a torture scene and an actor, uh, all these actors were coming in and like the, the main actor was in a chair and all the actors were coming in and yelling at them and just like screaming in their face because that's what one does when they were tortured. And the, an actor came in and he said, you know, I'm gonna do something different because I think this is fun for me. This, is, this, is, this would be torture for me and fun for me. And he just danced around him and sang the silly song, you know? And guess who got the role? But that was because that was for him, you know? Like he had that idea, that was something that would be torturous to him. And I think, you know, just just realizing, like, like I was telling to Kelly, like those big bold choices might lose you the job. You know, you might not gain that job because of those big bold choices. But but another casting director uses this this phrase strong but wrong, you know, strong but wrong. Um, you were strong, but you might have been wrong. But I'm going to remember you. Right. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. Remember that person that did that thing that might have not been that right thing for that thing. But that's right for that thing, you know, um, and, and we take note of that. And so I think, you know, just again, I can't stress it enough, playing it safe and trying to like, you know, oh, okay, I'm just gonna do it this way because whatever, it's, you, you might get lost in the shuffle. So, so just realize again, I can't stress it enough, do the thing that's right for you. If you're going in for the role as Alex, it should be okay, what would Air could do as Alex, not what Alex would do, because who knows what Alex would do. <music> When it comes to volume with self tapes, play the scene, not your setting. So if you are in a coffee shop, most of the time you're gonna be right next to your scene partner or knee to knee, right? You, you might be an arm's length. So that should dictate how you would use your volume. You know, I think that when people are saying, uh, you're being too big, they're using that term wrong. 90% of the time it has to do with your volume, you know, because when you're on stage, of course you're projecting. And we, when, you know, back in the day, when again, we were coming in, you know, for auditions, people would come in and they would just, you know, be done with their matinee and they would still have the projection voice. And we're like, oh, let's do it again. Just dial back on their bottom. There was like, oh, okay, eight shows a week. I'm so sorry, boom, 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 boom. Um, so most of the time, just dial down on that volume and that energy that you're bringing into that volume is gonna go somewhere else, right? Um, and especially, you know, if it's a scene, like an intimate scene or a scene where you're, you know, telling something that you've never said before, you know, I, I don't like the whisper, you know, don't whisper, but talk normally, you know? And if you're mic'd, it's gonna catch you, you know? Um, so, so just realize that, you know, playing the scene, not necessarily, like even if we're in person and your reader is, you know, three, like 30 feet away from you, don't play to that reader, play to the scene um, because that volume is gonna be too too loud for that. And, you know, of course, if you're yelling or, or doing something like that, that's one thing, but most scenes you're just talking, you're sitting and talking to someone. Um, so using your just regular voice is, is fine. And I think also that goes back into, I can't stress it enough, always watch yourself take back right? Always watch your self-tape back. If you have time, send it to someone else because your self-tape would be beautiful on your computer or your phone. And then for some reason on something else, it's not synced, you know, it's pixelated. So if you do have time, send it to someone else to see how long it's downloaded. You know, sometimes self tapes take 20 minutes to download and that's 20 minutes a little too long, you know? And that's why I was talking about the, the, the file size, uh, you know, the 720 or, or the 980 situation um, because it doesn't have to be too big, but just send it to a friend, you know, see how long it downloads and see if it, it plays and it's synced up, you know, so, so that it's, it's not corrupt. Oh, 
I'll be honest with all of you, whoever's watching, um, and and uh, people close to me uh, at where I am right now can attest. Um, the last three days, I was up until four a.m. watching self tapes. When did you start? <laughs> Ten a.m. Maybe you break for lunch. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, whatever. But, but, you know, it's, it's a lot. But I think that's the beauty of this time is the fact that, like, when we were bringing in people for auditions, we had a set amount of time, right? 10 to 6, right? Or 11 to 5 or whatever it is. That was a set amount of time. And in that set amount of time, you can only see a certain amount of people. Time is a construct, right? Um, but now... I can see more people and I, I'm, I'm introduced to so many more actors because like I said, I can watch self tapes on this phone. I could watch it, you know, you know, between meals, I can do things. And so I've met a lot of actors through this time because self taping, you know? Um, so I think that is the beauty of this situation is that yes, it is a lot of self tapes. I was working on a show a couple months ago and in two weeks I watched 2,500 self tapes. Um, but because I didn't know a lot of those people, I'm now bringing them in for other things on the shows that I am working on now. Um, so that's why I always say, everyone's watching what you're bringing, everyone's watching what you're submitting. We have to, it's our job. And that's what, that's what casting is and that's what makes me happy about casting is that every time I start a self tape or you know, God willing when we're back in, in, in a person, we're all rooting for you. Every time I start a self tape, even at 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, please be good. Please be good because we are rooting for you. We're like your managers. We want you to do well. We want you to succeed. We want you to be the best you can be. So I know a lot of people are saying, "Uh, I'm just doing a self tape. I'm sending it somewhere. No one's going to watch it. No, 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 no. We're watching your self tape. Uh, so again, be the best you can, do the best you can at that day and at that time. That's another perfect thing. Your personal best, your day, that day is going to be different than your personal best yesterday, which might be person uh, different from your personal best tomorrow. So we're just looking for your personal best on that day, at that time, at that hour, at that minute, at that second. And we're excited to see you regardless of if it's in person or on the screen. This is the entertainment industry and every single self tape I'm watching it's entertaining, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's provoking, it's thoughtful, it's sweet, it's funny. I'm lucky that I work on a lot of comedy right now, that's a saving grace, you know, so at, a lot of these self tapes are bringing me so much joy, um, uh, you know, cause they're making me laugh. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an honor to watch and a privilege to watch what, what you all are doing. Mm -hmm.